Hello everyone, I'm Zach Peterson and welcome to another Flux tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to perform a design review in Flux. Now with Flux being an online design environment, the approach to design reviews is a little different than what you would do in a desktop platform. Sometimes with a desktop platform, you're actually emailing the design around to people for them to review. But with Flux, you can take a collaborative approach in the online platform. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. Let's get started. So when you're performing a design review, you might be wondering, what exactly do you need to review? And then the other question that is to be asked is, when should you do a design review? Typically, if you're doing a professional job for somebody or if you're doing design as part of your day job working for a company, um, you're gonna do a design review at a few key points in the design process. So the first is in your schematic. So once the schematic is all finished, what you would wanna do is go through and make sure that all of the connections that are needed in the design have been made, that all of the parts in your BOM are present, and that any uh, interfaces that might be needed to uh, other uh, circuits in the design, say if you're gonna use this as a sub layout, are present in the schematics. The other thing that you should do is you should do some checks on the components. And since some components might start as generic components, We'll go through that process here in just a moment, but you will want to check the components as well. The next place where you'll want to start doing a design review is in the PCB layout, and specifically once the PCB layout is completed. So when you're doing uh, a design review in the PCB layout, uh, the rules-based system in Flux uh, places a different set of requirements on a design review than you would find in like a desktop design software. This is because the design rule engine in Flux actually determines a lot of what's in the design. And again, we'll go through an example here shortly, but you'll definitely want to get uh, into the PCB layout and do some reviews on the layout after you get the layout to this stage where everything is pretty much placed and routed. And if it's a complex design with some certain mechanical requirements, it's actually a good idea to do the review once after the placement and then again after all of this routing is done. Now, the last place you'll want to start reviewing uh, in your design as part of a final review is the manufacturing files. So this is generally a spot check. Um, you're just making sure that the data that you export from the platform uh, using the export tools here in the main menu uh, give you data that looks correct. So essentially what you're doing is you're just gonna open up the bill of materials, make sure that all the components have sourcing information. It's just a quick check. Um, you wanna open up the Gerbers, and the reason you wanna open up the Gerbers in a Gerber viewer is so that you can make sure the data that gets exported looks the same way as you see in your design program. So in this case, you would wanna have like the layout open on one screen, and then you could open up a new tab and then go over to uh, a Gerber viewer to then uh, check out the Gerber files and make sure that they look correct. Then, once you've done all of this, you're gonna send it into a manufacturer. The manufacturer is gonna do their own review to check for DFM. Now, um, if you have already followed their DFM rules and programmed that into the rules engine when you're building your design, then you have a much higher chance of ensuring that the design that you send them is actually going to be first manufacturable in terms of fabrication, but also in terms of assembly. So let's dig in a little bit deeper on a design review and I'll show you what to look for in each of these three phases. So first let's look at the schematic and what we'll do is we'll check out some of the components, but we'll also look at what you might need to review if you were working with sub layouts. So first in this particular uh, schematic that I have on the screen, um, I just have components here. I don't have any other, uh, any other sub layouts or anything like that. Um, I just have parts. So here, if you were to look through this, you would of course wanna make sure that all of the parts in your BOM are present in the design. Um, sometimes it helps to review designs in sections. Um, you also wanna click through on these components and make sure that they have things like a manufacturer part number and manufacturer name. And the reason you do that is because, of course, at some point you're gonna to wanna to order this. 
and this information is going to appear in a bill of materials. So if you actually go through and do the ordering yourself, it helps to of course have all that listed because you can upload that information to like DigiKey or Mauser. And then in the process of doing that, it will create a order for you. Or what you can do is if you're gonna send this design off to a manufacturer and they're gonna handle all the sourcing for you, they actually need to see all of this data with manufacturer part number and manufacturer name. And then they will go through and order things. Um, it also helps uh, to to just have a, uh, a listing from you know something that's actually in stock from like Mauser or DigiKey. That way you can make sure that when you're going to go and buy all the parts for this, they are available. Um, and you'll want to do this on each component that starts as a uh, generic component. So you can see here as I'm clicking through all of these passives, um, all of these are or it started as, I should say, a generic component. So you just want to make sure that there is manufacturer information entered in here. So after doing all of that, you also want to check to make sure that all of the connections that you need to make are actually made. Now, someone might look at this uh, connection here on R1 and say, hey, this doesn't look like it's actually connected. You know, what's going on here? Um, of course, you know, when I grab this and move it around, you can see that it actually is connected. So it's a lot of little things like that. Um, but the big thing here is, of course, making sure that these parts can actually be procured. The other thing that you want to make sure of is that once you do enter in a part number, that you have the correct footprint assigned to this component. Now with passives, if you have the wrong footprint and you need to change it, it's usually not a problem because once you go into the PCB layout, it's just gonna change essentially the size of these packages and fixing the routing is really easy. But what about this uh, component here, U1? Well, if we had the wrong footprint on U1, then what we would need to do is go through and change more of the routing once we set the correct footprint. So that's another important thing to consider. We wanna make sure that we have all of the uh, footprints correct on these different parts. Now, just as an example, um, let's take a look at a different type of project. Here, I have a part, which is just you know C1 right here, but you can see here that this particular design was made from sub layouts. And this sub layout that you see right here, um, this sub layout should also have been reviewed before it's actually used in this project. So sub layouts need to go through their own design review. And it's important to do that when you finalize the sub layout, but before you use that sub layout in another project. So if I right click on this and open it, I can then go into this sub layout and I can do a review on that sub layout as well. Now, if the sub layout was constructed correctly, it's already gonna have the sourcing information in for all those parts. Um, at minimum, it's just gonna have the footprints and the MPNs available inside of uh, each of these parts. So that way, when you go through and you do an export of the bill of materials, you can actually purchase everything. You also wanna make sure, of course, that these uh, footprints are the correct footprints. Um, again, once you actually go to the PCB layout, um, then that will ensure that the correct footprints for each of these components appears in the PCB layout for this project. So let's go back into this project and do a quick review of the PCB layout and see if we can find any problems. So here inside the PCB layout, um, first things first, you'll want to check some of the basic floor planning things. And you wanna also check to ensure that you have actually uh, made all of the connections that you need to make. And sometimes that can help you spot any errors that might exist in these footprints. Um, so real quick, one thing that we see here is we have an unrouted net between these two points. Um, we would just wanna make sure and check in the schematics that these two points are connected to the correct net and not just to each other. If they only need to be bridged together, then that's fine. We can just complete that route very quickly and we're done with that. Um, the other thing that we would want to do is to make sure as far as floor planning that we've placed things in the correct location. Ideally, we will have done this during a placement review. Um, we also wanna make sure that we have things like ground and copper pour in the locations where we want them. So here you can see on the top and bottom layer, I have copper pour visible, but um, it's been hidden on the internal layers and actually disabled totally on the internal layers, as you can see from this uh, crossed out teardrop button. 
Now, um, we would want to make sure in our uh, rules assigned to all of our different objects that we have actually applied the stitching and the ground pour that we want on different layers. And so you can do that with a connected layer rule and then you can apply the stitching rules. So there's another video in the description that talks about using ground pour and how to apply those rules to ground pour. I'd suggest you watch that video to see how you can use uh, those design rules to uh, customize your layout. Once you then check to see that you have everything routed um, and that all of the placement uh, works and is correct, um, one of the things that you can actually do is take this into 3D. If you go into 3D, you'll be able to get a more realistic view of what the board actually looks like. One of the things I would want to check in this uh, layout uh, by looking in 3D is this reference designator R2. Now you can see right here, R2 falls a little bit close to the silk screen and the component outline for this header and in fact they're actually overlapping. Now this is something that a uh, assembly house or a fabricator would actually spot during their review and they would say hey you need to move R2 the component or you need to move the reference designator for R2 so that way you don't have this overlap. Now it's perfectly fine to manufacture a board with this kind of silk screen overlap but just know that if you had this in your board that a fabricator would call this out and let you know that it's something you should consider changing. So don't be surprised if you get that email from a fabrication house telling you this. So you may want to move this component entirely. You may want to just adjust the footprint so that the uh, reference designator doesn't overlap with this component outline for this pin header. Um, whatever works for you in your particular layout, but just make sure that you do that. Now, one of the things that can be deceiving by looking in 3D is that you see all the traces here, but normally these traces are covered in solder mask. Well, just to verify that the solder mask is all correct, what you can do is go back into 2D, and you'll see here that you have a set of layers up on the top, and what you can do is you can actually uh, you can uh, disable some of these other layers just so that you can check just the solder mask. So here this shows all the solder mask openings for all the different components on the board. We see that there is indeed solder mask on the pads uh, for all of these components and you can see that just kind of by toggling the top layer um, on and off. And so it's very clear that we have solder mask in all the correct places. Um, then of course if you had components on the bottom layer you would then want to do the same. Now you can also do some basic DFM checks in your PCB layout. Um, one of the major things that you need to worry about as far as DFM is uh, trace clearances and trace sizes. And you can control this uh, by looking in the objects uh, panel and then selecting the right object and then just checking the design rules that are applied to that particular object. So just as an example, let's take this net. So this is the net that goes from this pad on R2 all the way up to this pin on this pin header. Now this particular trace width is set to the default value. And I know it's set to the default value because I don't have any object specific rules applied to this particular trace. Now you can see here there's a list of preferred trace widths and there's a size that is preset. Um, but what I can actually do is I can set a trace width for this particular trace. And that might be important just because of the clearances between the trace and other pads. Maybe I don't wanna to have to reroute it. Um, or you may have already applied a trace width that actually doesn't work for that portion of the layout. And because of that, you may need to go through and change the design rules. So this is one of those things about Flux is that a lot of these characteristics of the layout are actually controlled in the design rules. And we could do the same thing with these vias if we wanted to. We could then um, control the size and some of the clearances around those vias using the design rules. So just as an example um, for this trace, let's say I need to make the trace width a different size to get between those two pins in order to meet my fabrication requirements. What I can do is I can select trace width from the design rules and I can make this instead of 10 mils, let's say six mil. Now, if I make this six mil, you can already see it then gets much smaller and um, it fits nicely between these two pins on this uh, pin header. 
So this is important again, part of DFM is making sure that you meet those clearances. Here we've got plenty of clearance in between uh, this uh, pad, this solder pad for this uh, pin header, and then uh, this particular trace running from here all the way down uh, through to R2. Now we may want to do the same thing on this particular net here. So if we did that, we would just select this, again, go through and add trace width. You can set it to, not 60 mils, but set it to six mil. And it will apply that to the entire net. We could also just apply it to this trace if we wanted to. So those are just a few of the things that you want to check when you're actually doing uh, this review inside of the layout is to make sure that you meet some of those basic DFM requirements. And a lot of that is, of course, clearances and then feature sizes. Now the last thing to do is to check out the manufacturing files. And so to do that, just go to the top menu, go to export, and then export each of the manufacturing files. And it's going to download to your local computer. You can then access them when they download. Here, I'm just going to extract all of these here and I'll be able to take these and put them into a Gerber viewer. And so you would wanna uh, look at these in a Gerber viewer just to make sure that um, all of these files match what we see here inside the PCB editor. So we'll have another video in the description on how to do that and how to prepare all those manufacturing files in Flux. I'd suggest you go take a look at that video if you've never done this in the past. It's a great tutorial on how to uh, create all those manufacturing files and what to look for to make sure that they are complete and correct. All right, that's all I have for everybody today. We've talked a lot about design reviews and a related topic to this is actually collaboration because collaborating with other designers and even with your manufacturer is very important when doing a design review. Flux has a lot of collaboration tools built into it. And so what we're gonna do in an upcoming video is go over some strategies for collaboration as well as some of the collaborative tools that you can use to review a design with one of your design partners. All right, thanks everybody, and make sure to go check out flux.ai and start using the platform, and we'll see you next time.